Hi, I'm Jeff Murrow. I want to welcome you to True Texas History, where today we are going to go ahead and talk about the Anahuac disturbances, because they happen on this day, June 10th, 1832. Um, now, in terms of what went down, uh, let me go ahead and, first of all, give you some background uh, concerning what all was happening uh, in the area of Texas at that point. Um, see, first of all, if you remember your timeline, in 1821, Mexico broke away from Spain. So you're dealing with a very young country. And uh, as a young nation, uh, barely over 10 years old, they were very zealous in uh, some of their policies. And uh, one of the uh, zealots uh, was Tehran. And he did a tour through Texas and uh, pointed out the areas that needed to be reinforced and needed to be taken care of uh, in order to secure the border and uh, secure uh, Mexico from uh, troublemakers, which they saw that uh, the American colonists would be uh, in their mind. And they went on a program to uh, de-anglicize things. And so they purposely changed the names of many locations uh, and cities uh, to uh, more Hispanic names, you know, hence uh, Anahuac, you know, at one point was Perry's Point, uh, you know, named after Henry Perry. And uh, many other places had, uh, thank you, Amy, uh, for, <clears throat> they were renamed in an attempt to uh, make it more uh, Mexican. And Tehran um, was dictating a lot of the policy. Now, his right-hand man located there at Anahuac was John Davis Bradburn. Now, John Davis Bradburn was, uh, you know, frontier type. He was actually born in Kentucky. And uh, he took Tehran's ideas uh, and started putting them into practice. Uh, and in 1831, uh, you know, when some of the colonists were... Uh, essentially settling, uh, he would do things like um, arrest the surveyors, because if there's no surveyors, the colonists are going to get no land. Uh, he arrested them, held them for a while, uh, then turned them loose. Now, what happened in the first Anahuac disturbance, the one that we're talking about today, is um, he came up with some uh, new wild-eyed policies. And what these new policies were, he says, uh, you know, the government of Mexico will not allow any settlers within uh, a set uh, amount of land uh, from the coast. And if you go down to Mexico, that law is still in effect. Uh, he was trying to implement it here. Uh, some of the colonists uh, complain. Uh, now, uh, in terms of implementing it, uh, if any colonists had land uh, within um, that area, he confiscated it, turned around and gave it to his friends. Um, and then on top of that, <clears throat> he said that the only port that uh, people can come into Texas um, is Anahuac. And that's it. And of course, you know, he was uh, charging them uh, tariffs on anything that they brought in. Um, especially tobacco and coffee, because for some reason the Mexican government hated tobacco and coffee. Um, so uh, there were some of the colonists that did, oh, and the, the third thing he did, he went ahead and impressed labor uh, because some of the colonists had slaves and John Davis Bradburn uh, would do things like... Uh, forcibly take the slaves from them, use the slave's labor, and then not reimburse uh, either the slave or the slave owner. Uh, and on top of that, he, he played both sides of the deck. He would use slave labor to go ahead and do things, but then he would turn around and uh, position himself as someone who uh, was anti-slavery because he would house some of the runaway slaves 
uh, you know, a, a typical politician playing both sides, uh, one against the other. Now, in doing so, uh, this aggravated uh, a lot of the people there, and uh, they essentially uh, protested. Uh, he made the Ayumento or the local uh, county government illegal, shut it down, went ahead and arrested 17 people. Among them, uh, William Jack, who went on to become a very notable lawyer, and a young 23-year-old, uh, William Barrett Travis, um, who uh, was down there. And with these uh, 17 men being arrested, uh, word went out into the local community uh, <clears throat> that they needed help. And so uh, the locals uh, you know, sent word to uh, the various communities and they managed to gather uh, about 100 volunteers that came to the area uh, armed, uh, demanding uh, that Bradburn go ahead and release the prisoners. Now, along the way, they went ahead and captured some uh, Mexican sentries and so forth. So, uh, they had, uh, 20 Mexican prisoners and they wanted to trade them for the 17, uh, that Bradburn had. And of course, Bradburn was not willing to, uh, budge initially. Uh, you know, and he, he was, uh, hated by the people. The, the people hated him. Uh, they thought that, that he was a sellout, uh, to Mexico so much so that they called him Juan Bradburn rather than John Bradburn. Uh, and it was intentionally meant as a dig. Now, uh, in terms of uh, how things went, uh, Bradburn eventually relented and uh, released the prisoners in a prisoner exchange. But uh, he was one of these passive aggressive types that went ahead and opened fire uh, on uh, the people receiving the prisoners. So, you know, the ones that were leaving, he went ahead and opened fire as they were leaving. Nice guy. Um, and I suspect one of the things that uh, made him change his mind is that the colonists were smart enough. Uh, not only did they uh, surround uh, Fort Anahuac, uh, they also persuaded uh, three ship owners to perform a blockade of the fort because Bradburn knew that unless uh, the colonists managed to block off the waterways, he could still get supplied. He wasn't worried about it. Uh, but once they did that, uh, they knew that they um, were going to go somewhere. And the colonists also knew that uh, in terms of attacking the fort, they were going to need some serious firepower. And this is going to lead to some more armed conflict uh, within the coming days. Uh, that finally got resolved with the Turtle Bayou Resolution because they went ahead and got themselves a cannon and uh, were in the process of bringing it back. Uh, and the importance of the Anahuac disturbances is that it set the stage for a conflict between uh, the Mexican fo occupational forces uh, and the Texas colonists. Uh, this was the first armed confrontation you know, where weapons were drawn they finally realized that uh, we meant business. So that's what happened on this day, uh, January the 10th, 1832, down there at Anahuac. Uh, if you ever get a chance, why don't you head on down there. Uh, and until next time, this is Jeff Murrow wishing you Viacom Diaz. Goodbye, my friends.